everyone. Today we're going to go over, uh, pick up what we left off um, in the last video. Last video we briefly spoke about what Maz was, why you would use it, and uh, in what scenarios would it be good to um, use as your main deployment. Um, so in this uh, video we're just going to go through the basic steps of installing it and basically just going through Maz's initial documentation things that I found that maybe don't always work right away and uh, we'll, we'll get through that. So the first thing we want to do is just look at the network we're on. Okay, so we're on a separate network from my actual machine because it's a virtual machine. So I'm going to just make sure that there's none of that uh, Hyper-V routing going on. Um, 22, 20, 218, 108. Okay, so I can actually reach this from my computer. That's very good. Um, so what we're going to do here is the very first bit, sudo snap install mask. I already have it installed, so it won't actually um, go through the process, but that there will be no errors um, because as long as you're fully up to date and you have snap installed on your machine, you're good to go. Um, everything pretty much comes by default, so you can actually copy and paste these if you wanted to. And then the next step is sudo maz init, right? So here we go. It's actually gonna tell us what we need to do. Uh, sometimes the documentation isn't really enough. And if it's your first time doing something, um, do like as much as you can. I know sometimes it scrolls by fast, but try to pay attention to the command line and looking at what it's saying. So it's saying that sudo maz init is uh, incorrect usage, right? So it's telling us the usage. It's telling us that there's something missing. Um, maz init dash h and then region plus rack region or rack right so whenever there's the plus it's and and the comma is or right so initialize maz in the specified run mode so the certain run modes are region plus rack region or rack right and it'll actually tell you that the region plus rack is both the region and rack controller and the region controller only and the rack controller only so uh, we're actually just going to go ahead and make them both on the same server. Uh, if you wanted a little bit more of a robust environment, you'd have them on separate machines. Uh, the most recent deployment that I've completed, I've handed it off already, so I really don't have much access to it anymore, is um, six different virtual machines. So uh, Maz uses a database with PostgreSQL um, and uh, a region controller and a rack controller. And then I created everything in um, high availability mode. So uh, two racks, two regions, and two Postgres, right? So we're just gonna go through sudo maz init region plus rack. All right. Now the database URI, right? So we're already looking at an issue here, right? Because it never told us that we need to set up the database before we do that, right? So we're actually just gonna cancel that and let's head over to the actual documentation, right? So this is just kind of like the getting started, a quick guide, but if we click over, <coughs> excuse me, if we click over to the docs, right? This is the easiest way to actually get to the correct installation uh, path, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we've done this. Um, we do already have the 2.8. And here it's telling us to initialize Maz. <coughs> and now it wants us to do the Maz test DB, right? So what this is gonna do, if you're not sure, this step installs a running Postgres SQL and a Maz ready database installation when it's done, whatever, right? So we're ready to do sudo Maz, sudo, sorry, sudo snap install test DB. Now, this is what the first command would look like. It just installs the snap and starts the snap right after. So, it actually, it may not start the snap right after. I always forget. Um, maz test db. Okay, now it's started and we're good to go. Now we can actually give it this command, right? Because we're just doing the basic, basic installation. Things can always get more complicated. Uh, like, that is one thing. You gotta get in your head is that it'll always get more complicated. As soon as you know the basic installation, next thing you want is a more robust installation, then high availability installation, then 
it gets wild. So we're just gonna go ahead with the basic stuff for now until we understand it more. Region plus rack, database URI, maz test db. And we're just gonna copy and paste exactly what it does, right? And now we're gonna give everything here as the default, right? So it's telling us what do we want the maz URL to be and it's saying this is gonna be the default. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that, right? So now it's gonna perform some database migrations and do all this cool stuff on the back end. And then in a couple moments, uh, we will be ready to hit that IP address um, and we can just log in at this URL, right? So I'm gonna let this finish and it can take a couple minutes, so I will be right back. Okay, it actually finished much quicker. I had just clicked the pause button. Um, now, as soon as we're done with that, this tells us that we can go ahead and access, um, yeah, the web GUI. But first step is to sudo mas create admin and create some information for the admin uh, user. Whoops. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. It actually tells us the same thing here. So if you want to configure external authentication, uh, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't mention that here, but uh, oh, it does actually. Never mind. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and sudo mas create admin, and we're going to give it the same name, and I'll just give it the same password and the same password again, and we're just going to do this. No SSH keys for now. Um, and now uh, we can verify that the MAS configured itself correctly and that there's no weird issues. But um, yeah, this should come up. If this doesn't come up, that you either miss this step or there's some issue with the snap that you installed. So at this point, if you've hit this part and there are some errors, um, go back through the steps. Uh, and if there's something that I've missed, let me know, but um, this should be where you're at now. Now, the next thing we need to do is stop following this, right? So this is initializing MAS for production configuration. In this case, you wouldn't want to use the MAS test DB, right? You would actually want to install Postgres, create a user, create the database, and create the initialization for the rack and the region on the database that you just created, right? So. Um, then it tells us we can check our MAS status. Um, go. And here we go. We haven't enabled any DHCP, so that, that makes sense. So I'm actually just going to scroll right up here and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that website. So 20.218.5240 slash and there we go, right? This is my virtual machine. This is my actual machine. And I can log in with the username and password that I configured. And this is actually pretty important, okay? Because the way that Maz works, and we'll get into the rest of this in the next video, um, but the way that this one works is that if you don't import SSH keys after you deploy a machine, you won't actually be able to SSH into it because it only uses that as the so you can you have the different options if you have it stored on Launchpad or GitHub or you could just upload it directly, right? So what we're gonna do and I'll show you guys how to do this uh, And then we'll end the video so that it doesn't run too long, but what we're gonna do is SSH keygen And it's gonna generate a public private RSA key pair I can make a different video explaining basically how this stuff works if you'd like but uh it's relatively basic. We're just gonna go through this process real quick. Uh, it's gonna save the uh, ID into here. If you wanted to name it a little bit differently, you can go ahead and give it uh, users home SSHD, sorry, SSH ID underscore Mass, right so we could just do that I mean realistically you'd only want one key pair uh, so I won't actually generate this because I actually have a CD SSH plus and I have a public key and I also have the RSA so what I would do is um, okay, I do cat? Uh, cat RSA. yep okay nice all right um, we're gonna go ahead and copy that 
and paste that here and import it. It's invalid. Oh, uh, that's my actual RID. Whoops. Uh, that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that and pop that in there. And now you'll see that the source was the upload. And we're good to go. I can go to the dashboard. Now, uh, we're going to leave everything pretty much the same because I don't have a, a different DNS forwarder that I want to add. The region name is fine because it's just a virtual machine. Uh, we're going to choose that as the source. We're going to choose um, to, yep, Maz.io, that's fine. And we're going to do that LTS because we're also using that one. So we're going to do update the selection. Keep it just a second. And now it's queued for download, right? Now we could just continue. DHCP is not enabled on any VLAN. This will prevent machines from being able to pixie boot unless an external DHCP server is being used. Now, <clears throat> MAS really, really, really works best if you make it the DHCP server. So we're just gonna do that because that's the recommended supported way of installing things. Um, and in the next video, we're going to go through subnets, VLANs, DHCP being enabled, and um, I will kick off a different uh, virtual machine. That way it's ready for the next video. So that way we can actually start looking at commissioning, deploying, releasing, all the fun stuff that Maz has to offer. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe and like click the bell. Uh, I hear that's good for the YouTube algorithm. algorithm. Uh, so please, yep, don't forget to support your boy. Uh, and thank you. Have a good one.